Hey guys, it's Danny. Today I'm going to try out some pretty unique setups for some very unique orchids. Here we have the Dendrobium Pseudo Equitans, the Medio Calcar, my new vanilla orchid. We have a Phragmipedium there, and I have some ideas for some rather unusual setups that I think will fit these orchids. So I decided to take you along, document this process and see how they do in time because I'm really not entirely sure how they will end up looking. In my mind, they look good, but who knows in reality, right? So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? I post three times a week. And with that said, let's start with, I think with the vanilla really, because I'm most excited about it. Alrighty, so here is the catch with the vanilla orchid. It can be both terrestrial and epiphytic. Since it is a climbing vine, it can actually have a portion of it rooting in soil and a portion of it climbing up a tree. If the portion which is rooted in soil dies off for whatever reason, it can actually survive as an epiphytic orchid. In cultivation though, and in my experience, the vanilla is so much easier to grow rooted in soil mainly and then offer the trellis or something to climb on because we don't really have time to spray all of these aerial roots all day long. And it actually roots quite well in medium, provided it is airy enough. However, the choice of medium for today will be something totally new for me. I'm going to be using cocoa peat mixed with some bark and a few other ingredients. You'll see what I mean because I will actually use this mixture, hopefully for multiple projects. So I went at Ikea and I got myself a bag of Odla, which I do find quite nice cocoa peat. All I need to do is hydrate it. Alright, so here is the end result. It is a uh, terrestrial slash epiphytic mix, high moisture mix, but very well draining and very airy as well. I will add something more, but I will do so directly in the pot. And as ratios goes, I don't know. I've never worked with ratios. Pretty much when the medium looks well draining enough and it doesn't really compact when you squeeze it in your hand, it's good enough. Next up, of course, we need to unpot the orchid. I will not keep any of this medium because it might actually have snails. So we do actually have a growing root tip, ooh, and a lot of sponges, but overall it's not all that bad. I might actually plucking this section as well so I have two roots inside the medium. The orchid will be just fine, so I'll get rid of this medium, I'll rinse the root system and come back to sanitize it. Okay, so I sprayed the roots of my orchid with hydrogen peroxide 3%, now it's fizzing away. And in the meantime, let's talk a little bit about the pot and let's also prepare it. I have here an unglazed terracotta pot from Ikea. This is the name right here. I really like that it comes with a tray and the tray is super tall because the way that I water fits perfectly with the system. Now you might say, oh no, it is so large in comparison to the pot the orchid came from. That is true, but it also doesn't matter. Orchids really don't care about pot size. And let's just remove the stickers while we talk. In nature, they are free to spread their roots as far as the eye can see, as it were, right? There's nothing containing them. Why would they like to be contained in cultivation? They don't, they don't care. The problem is bigger pots tend to retain more water. And if you're not sure how to prepare the medium in accordance to the size of the pot, then you might have issues with the pot staying super soggy for months in a row. Maybe not months, but you get the idea. It's gonna stay soggy for a long period of time. This being an unglazed terracotta pot, it will transpire, it will leach out water. Also my medium, it is water retentive, but very well draining at the same time. And I also know how to keep an eye on things and how to make sure that my orchid will not stay soggy and swampy all the time. So pretty much that's the only idea with the size of the pot. Other than that, they don't really care. There's no reason for them to care. So at this point, I will use the third ingredient, which is activated charcoal from the pet shop. This is something I never used before. Some people swear by it. 
I've done okay without it up until now, but this does not mean that I don't wanna try it. I definitely do wanna try it and make an opinion based on my experience if this stuff actually does anything. So I'm going to add just a few of these little straws and mix them in the medium. Maybe add a little more. Now, since this orchid is a vine, it would be lovely to have something to climb on, right? Well, as it just so happens, I do have this bamboo trellis that I purchased a long time ago for my Hoyas when I used to have Hoyas. So I think that my vanilla will be happy to climb on this trellis. I just hope that this pot will be big enough and sufficient enough to hold it upright. We'll see. So first I'm gonna try to stabilize the vanilla and I think that is perfect. And this will make potting the roots much easier. Things are looking pretty good and I do believe my trellis is as stable as I can get it. Because I used perlite though and perlite tends to get all stained and bad looking, I'm going to top dress with bark chips. Now typically this would have the same effect as mulching. So it will tend to retain water inside the pot, which might not be a good idea. But since this is an unglazed terracotta pot, which will breathe all the time, I don't have to worry about excess moisture inside the pot. And there we are. I think everything is looking absolutely precious. Now, how will I know when to water? Simple. I will try to memorize the weight of the pot, but also all I need to do is touch the terracotta pot. When it's dry, I will know that whatever is inside is about dry as well. So that's when I'm going to water. So now I'm actually going to give the circuit a good watering and set it in a bright location and hopefully it will do great. Next up, here I have a Phragmopedium orchid, which I will pot in a self-watering pot. Now, you might know I have quite a lot of lechuzas. I'm quite a fan of them. This is the Lechuza deltini, so the bigger version. And I do believe it's going to be quite fitted for the Phragmopedium, which needs to be always moist. And to be honest, I didn't quite get down the care for Phragmopediums. I always seem to run out of water. So I think a self-watering pot will do great. And also I will be using the same type of medium as with the vanilla. Again, I think it's gonna do good. I have seen a Phragmopedium in Coco Peat doing great, but still I feel the need for some aeration. So let's just go for it and see what happens. One thing that I forgot to do with the vanilla and I will do so with the Phragmopedium is add a few beads of slow release fertilizer because this orchid will only be receiving reverse osmosis water and quite a little fertilizer to be honest. I wanted to have something in there to offer nutrients without me having to hassle with diluting fertilizer all of the time. The slow release fertilizer that I used is the Osmocote High K or High Potassium which is something that I am kind of experimenting with. I am adding those beads to most of the orchids that I recently acquired. Potassium is actually a very, very important nutrient in the orchid hobby, and I do actually have filmed a video about it. Not sure when I will post it. I filmed it like a month ago. I'm waiting for some results. I personally prefer either super balanced fertilizers like 10, 10, 10, plus of course, micronutrients, calcium, magnesium as well. The more the better, if possible. Or high nitrogen, high potassium fertilizers such as the MSU that I've been using for the past almost four years at this point. I'll link it down below to a study which refers to treating Phalaenopsis with low potassium fertilizers and <laughs> the awful results. This reminds us a little bit about the k -Light fertilizer that we had a few years ago, which some people had very bad results. Yeah. I'll save the discussion for that video. But yeah, just so you know, when it comes to nutrients, I am all pro either super balanced, either high nitrogen, high potassium, under no form low potassium. On this one, I will not add a top layer of bark because I am running another experiment in the background with this medium. So we are pretty much done. I will water it and make sure that there is water in the reservoir and we're pretty much done. Next up, we're gonna pot the really lovely Medio Calcar Decoratum into a bonsai pot. And this is because this orchid has more of a creeping nature. It tends to produce roots 
along the creeping rhizome and I do believe a shallower but a wider pot will do great for it. And I happened to find this bonsai intended pot at the flower shop. So I'm going to be using a bark and sphagnum moss medium for this one. So here's something that I like to do with all of these pots, which are just a little bit raised. Because my setup actually relies on using the tray as a reservoir, I'm going to be starting as usual with a layer of, I was about to say bark, nope, sphagnum moss. But make sure that some strands just go out of the drainage hole. This will not clog the drainage hole. Water will sip in, no worries, but it will make the sphagnum moss touch the actual tray and absorb the water when the humidity levels in this pot will decrease. So I basically use the moss as a sort of wick, a natural wick that is. And there we go, isn't that the cutest thing ever? Now, depending how fast this grows, I might be able to take some cuttings to put in the terrarium sooner rather than later, or have to change the pot. I don't know, we'll see. Ever since I purchased it, it grew these little growths. Initially, I thought they were flowers, but nope. The flowers are really pretty on this orchid. I cannot wait for it to bloom. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully this pot is not way too tiny for my little clump here. Just a few finishing touches and we're good. And lastly, here we have the Dendrobium Pseudo Equitans, which is such a beautiful orchid. But look what happens when I turn it this way. It's not so flashy. I really like it like this, but I don't want to keep it mounted. So the ideal setup, I believe, would be something that would be a little tilted. So not like this, but a little tilted. And so I came up with something because I looked far and wide for some pots or decorative containers which were tilted and I couldn't find any. So I'm going to produce my own. So hang on to your seats. This will imply crafting and oh boy, I'm not good at crafting. <laughs> All right, so what I wanna do is make this decorative container sit like so on top of the bottom one. And as you can see, it sits but at the same time, it does this. So I wanna stabilize it in a way to actually sit like this. See, it kinda slides away. So I think I will add some rubber legs to the bottom pot. Will this work? I don't know, it might fail. And guess what? That's fine. We learned through failing and it just so happens that I have a YouTube channel, so I'm gonna film my fails. So one of the legs, Let's put it here. I'm gonna put it randomly on one of the sides of this decorative pot, right? So on one side, we can see that it made no difference. So I need to put it higher up. Can I unglue it? Yes, I can. So higher up is the way to go. Let's test it out now. Much better. Ooh, it actually sits nice. So you know what, if I place the other one in the same position, but on the opposite side, will that make a difference? That is the question. And please excuse the noises you hear in the background. I cannot control them. Alrighty, let's see if we did a good job here. We did, look at this. Well, if you insist, it will still slide up to a point, but it's not so willing to slide, which is what I wanted. I believe this is pretty stable. Yes, I'm a wizard at crafting, aren't I? So because this is an epiphytic orchid, again, I'm gonna go with my typical sphagnum moss and bark chips mixture. All right, so the question is, does this even work? So I'm not gonna place it like this. This doesn't look good. I'm gonna place it like so. Please work, please look nice. And look at that, it actually looks good. It looks like I wanted it to look like, which is having this flame-like shape 
If I would put it horizontal, it would lose all of this. And mind you, now it's not really used to sitting in this position. It will arrange itself a little bit better. You can see these growths are actually arching up, right? So that is actually what I wanted to do. This is the natural, let's say, pattern of this orchid, which I definitely wanted to maintain because it's beautiful, but I didn't want to grow this orchid mounted. And I think it will arrange itself. It looks beautiful, I love it. Crafting projects always make me nervous because I fail most of the times. But hey, I think this looks good. And before I let you go, I just wanted to show you this guy as well, which I didn't feature in this video because I made a separate video about the Lepanthus. So I will link it to it down below. I do consider it a pretty unique setup in comparison to all of my other orchids. But you can imagine that you can put whatever other type of orchid that could fit there. You can actually put a miniature Phalaenopsis only with the roots inside and with the leaves outside. If it looks good, hey, why not? It can work out. And bottom line is it's fun to experiment and it's also fun to not have to stick to a certain set of rules that might just not work with your lifestyle, right? So that's the aim of this video. And of course, I sure need some training in the crafting department. So I'll just take this as experience. So this video was shot throughout multiple days. So if you notice any inconsistencies, that's why you might notice some similarities with other videos that I will post during this time. It's been a very creative time, but yeah, if something doesn't necessarily look like it belongs in the same day, then probably it doesn't belong in the same day. But with that said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed today's video and I hope you have a great day. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!